So our geographical uh, fire service area is about 187 square miles, the statutory limits for the city of Hibbing. We are involved in a mutual aid box alarm system uh, all the way out to the city of Virginia and the city of Grand Rapids. We go about 25 miles in each direction. Um, we also service uh, an ambulance area of about 600 square miles through, uh, through our primary service area and an intercept program with our neighboring BLS services. We are going to push about 4,000 calls in 2024 and about 85% of those calls are EMS. 15% of those calls are fire related. We are a regional fire department. We have a great collaboration network with our neighbors. We, uh, we also provide services uh, such as confined space, high and low angle tech rescue, uh, ice water rescue, cold water rescue type of services that some of our neighbors uh, don't necessarily do. Our primary challenge that we have at this juncture is we physically don't have enough room for the equipment that we have. The building was built in 1964. In 1964, the fleet of trucks was a lot different than it looks today in 2024. Um, we've downsized the big truck fleet by three since I've been, become the fire chief in the last 10 years, but when we downsize by three trucks, one gets really big. Um, and we've done as much efficiencies as we can get um, with all of our equipment. We have five ambulances, we have uh, a primary engine, ladder rescue, uh, ancillary vehicles, off-road utility vehicles because of the nature of the calls that we get. And a lot of our equipment is either stored outside or it's stored at off-site facilities in the city and we have to go and get them when needed. The building was built in 1964, construction practices at that time. I, I can't really understand and don't know why they would have not core filled the block in this building, but apparently they did not. And whenever it rains over the last 60 plus years of heat and frost cycles, um, the degradation of the block, it fills up with water and the water has nowhere for it to go. It freezes. Um, it heats up, it freezes, the block cracks, it makes the water worse. Uh, we had a, a bar engineering study come in and do some, a good hard look at the building to see what our best options were. And we've had a, a local masonry contractor uh, come in and take a look a, on top of that. And we're told that about 95% of the block of the current building needs to be replaced. That means we would take it right down to the, uh, basically the concrete footings and start over. And the footprint that we're at, we would be just rebuilding what we have and we haven't gained anything. When I started here 30 years ago, close to 30 years ago, uh, there was no females. About 22, 23 years ago, we hired our first female. Um, and at that juncture in time, we were very much like any other fire department. We just put a shower curtain up at the end of the hallway, stickers on the door said female inside. Uh, over, the, over the course of time, we have a number of very capable females that work with us. Uh, when we did a remodel uh, of the current building to accommodate different sleeping quarters that were OSHA compliant for uh, gender equity, the locker room that they built because of space is insufficient. At that time when they built it, we had one female. Today we have six or seven great ladies that work here and they share a locker room and they all can't be in there at the same time. So gender equity as far as space goes, um, for, for their own uh, personal needs on a, on a, when they're here at work or is just inadequate and not comparable to the males. No matter what we've done to try to maintain this building and we've spent a tremendous amount of time, money and effort in maintenance of this building, it just doesn't seem to get any better. We've certainly not been able to slow down the degradation process. Uh, we have done, uh, we have a pretty robust maintenance budget. We actually have maintenance work that gets done every single day here uh, as far as, uh, the, as much as we can physically do and um, you know it the the department members see the deteriorating conditions of the building and they know that it's not getting any work better and they've seen the city uh, administration and councils and administration of the fire department figure out what we can do to make this a better accommodation and today's re recruitment and retention problems that fire departments across the nation have, this certainly isn't helping us. When you can go down to our friends and colleagues in the Twin Cities Metro and you see big beautiful stations that meet all the needs that they want and they come back up here and they see us parking trucks outside and rigs outside and you know paint falling off the buildings and, and uh, it, you know it, 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 we have a great dedicated staff um, but it would go a, a long, long ways to actually provide them what they need to, to do the jobs that they do. Well, one, I think it would benefit because we do collaborate with our friends in the police department. 
we'd literally be able to go down the hallway and talk to one of our police officer colleagues or the police chief or deputy chiefs. Um, right now, I had a meeting with the police department this morning and we either have to go across town, we have to do it via Zoom, we have to do it via email, uh, you know, touching base and playing phone tag all the time. So I think it would go really a long ways for, for the morale and the uh, collaboration amongst just the rank and file members because we see each other every day and we'd like to be able to see them in a light that's just not necessarily on a call. The secondary thing is, is we could actually get into a building that provides us what we need, the space that we need, the equipment that we can store. Um, it would just make us so much more efficient. I, I think that we have a, you know, a little bit biased, but we have a very good service. We have great members, but we're not as efficient as we can be. And the efficiency is just because we physically can't do it. Well, I think it would benefit the community in a lot of ways. Um, people would be pretty surprised. We do, like I said, run an ALS ambulance service. We do get members of our uh, of the public coming to see us just about every day. Most of, you know, Monday through Friday, certainly business hour weekdays. We have a tremendous amount of people that come here every single day. Ambulance billing questions, fire permit questions, you know, all kinds of different things. And if you could make it a one-stop shop between anything with public safety and being uh, also put together at uh, potentially at the joint uh, public works facility you could have public works police fire ems the, the probably the most b visited city departments all in a one-stop shop to fund the your safety our priority plan the city of giving is proposing a local half percent sales tax if approved by voters this november the local sales tax will be paid by residents and non-residents who purchase qualifying goods and services in the city of giving